Greetings, greetings, greetings. This is Lisa. Let's turn off all the phones and say hello to you. And welcome to Heal Talk Tuesday. Wow, what a gorgeous time it is in life, isn't it? So Heal Talk Tuesdays, it's time to break through barriers and of beliefs, thinking about that things in a whole new world, in a whole new way, and removing blocks in our life so that we can move forward. How do we do this? We do this by uh, what I call Heal Talk is about helping you evoke what was, um, evoking passion, energy. It is also about embracing what is, the reality, facts, not stories we make, and of evolving to what we desire to be, what we dream that we want to make it happen in mind, in body, and of emotions. So through Heal Talk, I bring you new possibilities, and new possibilities in thinking, in envisioning, creating solutions, and how we can impact our psyche, our mind, our body, to let go of certain aspects of uh, shame and pain and guilt, all the negativities in order to create a happier and more fulfilled life. So the focus is being on hypnosis and hypnotherapy. This is what I do as, um, as a trade. Um, stress management, and today we're going to be talking about stress and how it affects us in psyche, in our emotions, and how it affects our body. And my the modality that I choose to work with my clients is through hypnotherapy. But it's all about inspiration and empowering with topics and ideas so that you too can apply in your life every single day. Um, hello, Marriott. Hello, Emmanuel and Alaya. So, what is stress, truly? Um, and how does stress affect us? Did you know that stress has been called the 21st century disease? It is. It's the stress in our life and the way it affects us and we allow it to affect us that creates the disease. Because frankly, stress is everywhere. We all deal, uh, we all have stress. Everyone has a different stress. Don't you have your own stress? Hello, Michael. Uh, we all have stress from uh, work from family, health issues, money issues, um, work issues, kids, their health, their well-being, and even for some people, what they're going to have for lunch can be stressful. And for others, as we were discussing with some of my friends, it's like, well, what am I going to make for food? tomorrow and what am I going to cook tomorrow because it feels like every single day I have to come up with something new and that in itself is stressful having a guest in your house can be stressful so actually it's not the things from the outside it's how we cope from the inside how we take it or allow it to affect us. I myself have been going through some stress of my own in my life, um, and it's not personal, it's work-wise and business. And I was thinking about what, what is happening in my body, and my face is broken. It's, you know, it breaks. The face is breaking. Um, 
dropped some weight, uh, not sleeping well, and emotional distress. And it's like, wow, the light bulb went out. Not out. It came on. It came on because what was happening is, as an expert in my field, that I help my clients de-stress, become calm, and recognize their, um, their issues of how to cope with stress is bringing it to surface. It's evoking the issue, the problem. What is the cause part of it? And then the effect, how is it affected? So we must, as I had to do, is embrace, okay, write down. Actually, I sat down and I wrote, this is exactly what's happened in my body. This is how it's affecting me. And by understanding the effects of it, it's let me go and see what calms the stress. I already knew it, but it's not the knowing of what caused the stress, but it's that one button that gets pushed. If you know what I'm talking about, you can just show me with um, a, a, an emoji or something like that, that although you may be stressed in life, you don't always know the core uh, connector, the trigger of it. So it's finding the trigger. What triggered me going into this loop of stress? Is it that I could not handle it? No, because I know I can handle it. Is it something I agreed to that it was over my head? Maybe, but that was not the trigger. So delving deeper within myself, I truly had to sit and go find the trigger. And frankly, the trigger, it's a core value trigger. And when I talk about core value, what are our core values? Every one of us has a different core value. It could be from respect. It could be from um, honesty, integrity, responsibility. Those are core values. Compassion. So looking at the core value to see what had disturbed my core value, that it was affecting and my body by having all this and not being able to sleep was doing what? It was off balance and I, yes, I'm human being, the same way as I help my clients, I too go through it, which I think it's an incredible thing that I can analyze it so much faster and I can be of help for my clients. It was connected to my core values, one of my core values, if not two. By recognizing that, I had to meditate and sit with it. How is it affecting my core value? And because it is affecting my core value, in order for me not to feel a victim, but to be in power, to take this decision to come on level and meet with responsibility, take responsibility of my actions, um, either right or wrong, up and down, black and white. It doesn't matter the story of it, but taking responsibility and seeing the bigger picture with a better microscopic view and say, this is what hurt. And this is what's hurting me. And that's why the inner child of mine went into this tantrum or defense mode. And the moment we go into defense mode, it's like we block everything. We do. We block everything. It's like, I don't want to hear it. No, 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 no. I am not... Uh, I do not have any tantrums. I do not have any personality. But that's the inner child. 
And so many of us go into this tantrum and defense mode and put walls around ourselves. Not so much about other people, but are around ourselves. And the moment we put the walls up, what do we do? Just like this. We are blocking breath. We are blocking energy. We are blocking love. We are blocking light because the wall that we create ourselves, around ourselves, sometimes it becomes a tunnel. A tunnel that we see ourselves so deep in it as if it, we are in a well, although there is water and we are just moving in the water and it's liquid. But we're in that tunnel and it feels like there is cement or brick around us and it's so high up we can't see the light. So what happens? We have to paddle. We go into this self-destructive mode, uh, blame, guilt, and instead of coming to silence and finding how it is affecting me and how can I stand up for myself, to value myself, to protect myself, and to know that I will be okay. And my big saying, this too shall pass. They all do. The good, when we are at high end, uh, excuse my language, but when we are at the climax of joy and having an incredible time, it's so temporary because that too shall pass. The rippling effect stays for a few minutes, for a few hours, there's a smile, and it feels good. But eventually, within a few hours, the rippling effect goes away, and what stays? The memory of it. And it's the same thing with negativity or hardship. This ease, this too shall pass. And if we clear the story of it and not allow it to affect us, that's when we can take one brick at a time or realize that every single tunnel that has been created, there is metal parts that we can hold on to. And instead of having our head down and crying, we can just look around, find one spot to put our hand and grab onto that and then start pulling ourselves up one level at a time and it doesn't matter if the tunnel or that where we are is very deep or very shallow sometimes we could be in a very shallow place and think we are hosed in within a deep place but there's always always a way out so what we are going through and how it's affecting, truly affecting, is, you know, in the book of the wild, uh, the braiding in the wilderness, there is a passage, there is a part that says, don't walk into the world looking for evidence that you do not belong, because you will always find that you do not belong somewhere. And if we look into the world for evidence that we are not worthy, <laughs> we'll find that too. Because our self-criticism is so much stronger and louder than anybody else's. Plus, and if we look into the world finding that uh, we're not good enough, or this was not good enough, or... Uh, what happened to me is not fair. We will always find injustice that you did me wrong. But what if we were to look at all that injustice, you did me wrong, or I am not worthy and everything as if we shift it 
and realize that our sense of belonging is not tied by what other people say, what the contract says, what my parents say, or anybody else, even your children or teachers say but who you are because the moment we negotiate that core value of us then we have dissed who we are so my question to you is do you know what your core values are what is it that it's not negotiable what is it that someone can say or do um, that will hurt you to your core and you say, you know what, that is not acceptable. That I, that part is not negotiable and we have to come up with a better resolution, come up with a better solution, find the means to move forward from here without me jeopardizing the best of me and that no one can teach us except us tapping within ourselves by the three e method which is the evoking and embracing and finding the ways to evolve it's empowering yourself for who you are because what are our core values um, life is not perfect and we must deal with it and uh, I want you to learn how to let go of shaming yourself and guilting yourself and the critical voice and instead of criticizing it how about you bring it to service and you say okay this was an opinion and this was an agreement how do we come uh, to table and see if we can resolve it? And that's what attorneys do for us. But what if we do it with the little child within us? And just say, I'm so sorry. I went against my own core values. I did not have your, your best intention, which is truly you're talking to yourself. And you were not parenting yourself very well and you just think, did things because you were under pressure you got bullied you were pushed into it and you know we see so much of that so much of that from the outside teenagers that hurt themselves either by cutting hurting themselves by uh, their body image hurting themselves by um, not coping with the diseases and constantly looking outside of themselves to please someone else and then resent themselves for doing it. So when we do that, it's finding ways to honor honor who we are uh, I got into hypnotherapy because over 18 years ago my body was breaking down because of all the stresses and it affected my body it affected my core being my sensuality my the part of my intimacy and that was after emotional divorce but it was not so much the divorce it was my own issues and how I was dealing with the stresses that I shut it and not coped with it so my body did the work for me it shut me down it created this ease breaking down in order for me to take time yesterday I'm talking to a friend of mine and she for the last two months has had operation uh, two falls 
major faults. Her uh, has a very small hairline of herniated disc fracture, and uh, her Achilles are in, uh, damaged. Plus, uh, from the fall, she broke her leg. Things that help us move forward, the legs, the body part that is the strength, the power. And if in our work we were to do this, I said, I hope you took time to heal. And she said, no, through this, with the surgeries and everything, I only took two days off. I had to work. When we diss our body and the body breaks down on us, it's truly shutting down. Sleeplessness is the mind constantly moving and not working. So how do we shut down? How do we honor ourselves from hurting our body how do we honor ourselves by taking responsibility is by shutting everything down if you have to sleep at eight o'clock and you're shutting down instead of moving because you have to push yourself that push in itself the push anything we push against is gonna push back or break down it's inevitable so I want you to be into that point of knowing, truly knowing, what is it that you are doing? And I want to share something that I wrote over here. But before I do that, I want to know how do you treat yourself? Can you treat yourself with more compassion? And how would that look? What if you need to forgive yourself for the mistakes that you did or for whatever it is that you agreed to and it's not sitting good with you? Um, yesterday I was told because of what I did the, and I'm taking responsibility for it, if I share that hurt and pain, I'm going, but that will make me look weak. And the moment I said that I may look weak, that I have done something that it was uh, over my head and I was not ready to do that, I realized it's not me speaking, but it is my ego. It's the ego that uh, says, oh no, you can't show wrongdoing. You can't show that you are stressed. You can't show that you are vulnerable because you're supposed to be the teacher and teachers are human. Teachers make mistakes. Teachers learn a very hard experience. So I want you to know that no matter what you do, that you are human we all are and no matter how julia roberts one time in a um an interview they said you are so beautiful you are so famous you are everything and she said you know what yes i am all of that and that's thanks to the people who allowed me to shine but i go to the bathroom the same way as you do sorry for saying this but it's truly true so sometimes we have to say, I am sorry here. I'm sorry for the mistakes I did. And this will help me grow through the hardship and learn. Or open my heart and say, I'm sorry uh, I did wrong. And how can we open heartedly? come and meet halfway and see what we can do. If we let go of the ego, that hardcore 
or unveil the labels, the ego, and um, realize that we can. Um, yes, we can make things bend, Michael says. Stress has become a negative cash all face. To some, it has become a socially acceptable excuse for exhibiting negative behavior, and to others, excuse for failure, to others, something different. It's true. Um, but what we don't realize is that when we do not cope with it and we shine it, we shun that off, it affects us it affects us and when we are affected our loved ones are affected because they want to help us they want to make it good for us or good by us and they don't know how to do it um, and that's the whole thing when we take this moment uh, because it, even if it is coming from letting go of spells and stories and let peaceful peacefulness draw people to us being authentic and saying uh, I'm so sorry I made a mistake and or even when I ask a client do you feel sexy or are you doing it for someone else how can we be tender with ourselves so the seven ways to let go of the past and free ourselves is stop replaying the past mistakes in our head it's like the same thing going over and over and over and over again and it can make us crazy or add to our regret and our guilt and if we can just stop and say that was then what can I do today how can I take this and be empowered how can I take this and instead of victim mode, victim mode, become victor? Find a victor um, relationship, and because the could have, should have, and those they do not help us anymore. It's already done. So it's holding on to the past hurts that it weighs us down. It breaks the body it's so dense it's hurtful instead of releasing it so what can we do I'm coming back to power letting go and releasing the past can be liberating and healing that's how we heal within so meditate and how do we meditate take three minutes just allow nothing and whatever thoughts, ideas, concepts, images, colors, all that he said and she said, everything that comes into you, every time it comes to you, just put it in a bubble, blow it away. Comes to you, blow it away. Another one, another negative thought comes or another thing comes to you, just say thank you and blow it away. It's relaxing your mind. It's relaxing your body. It's called three minutes. Give yourself that moment of silence. And if you vibrate on such high stress level, and then when you shut down and just give yourself three minutes of nothingness, because even doing nothing is doing something. Remember, doing nothing is doing something and if we do that we can de-stress so be fully present be fully present with what you feel feel nothing and let it go the next one is being grateful being grateful that you can have this moment with yourself being grateful that no matter what is happening at that very moment you are able to be coherent, be present. You are breathing, you are living, you do have a mind. 
You can feel. You can walk, hopefully. And whatever is happening on the inside, just say, I accept you. I appreciate you. I am worthy. Make a real effort to be grateful for all the experiences. And just two days ago, I expressed this with a friend of mine that I was talking and I said, because of that negative, because of that decision, it made me call you and we reconnected after 11 years. You see? And he looked at me and smiled and said, do you always find the bright side in everything? So I laughed. I laughed and I giggled and he hugged me. And for that five minutes that I was hugging him and he was hugging me, nothing mattered. At that very moment, I became vulnerable. I became human. I had a personal connection. I was safe. I was being cuddled. And I felt heard and seen. And the rest of them, it just became a contract. So if we meet every relationship that it's hurting us or that we had a hand in the decision or the result of that hurt if we open our heart and tell a new story instead of the old same story what if we came up with a new story today and take the i can't all the blah, 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 redundant, run on sentences and say, if I could make one change today, if I could be hugged, be seen, be heard by this one situation or this person, how would I feel differently? If I put the ego away, how would my heart feel? So those are the small little things. Aligning yourself with what you desire and the loving outcome, the loving outcome you would like to feel. And forgive yourself for being hard on yourself. And have some compassion and allow all the past pains that you can today evaluate as useful ways to step forward in life and move forward in life. The more loving heart, open heart, open mind, and say, I matter. I matter. With this, take a nice deep breath. And as you hold four counts, four, three, two, and exhale. One more time. And hold, four, three, two, one, exhale. And one more time, nice deep breath. And four, three, two, I matter. I am worthy. I accept and appreciate myself far more deeply than ever before. 
I take responsibility for my decisions and the agreements I made. I choose honesty and integrity for who I am. For I am worthy, I am enough, and I matter. And the past experiences will be a lesson and how I learn my lessons so that I can make my life better from today on, from this moment on, from this minute on. Because this very moment can be the moment that you choose to change the past story and stand up for yourself. This reminds me of my event coming up and it's called life's journey from pain to power and it's not this kind of a power it's the inner power of how we stand strong and tall for who we are and we say through failures through mistakes How can I change the story today? And feel the empowerment that you stand up for the inner child, for the little girl, for the little boy, and say, I hold your hand. If no one else has held my hand, I hold your hand. Because I can. That's how we can unveil to freedom my event has powerful speakers and one of the speakers is going to be me and on this day I will bring someone else on stage you will see true live action of the work that I do be witness the women as we come together this is a day dedicated to you. It is not a day of awarding you, but you will feel rewarded. Not only through listening to the speakers and their stories, but you will also see life, someone else's life, change, transform right there in front of your eyes as you feel it for yourself through all the healing, experimental uh, healing exercises that we will do. So you will be evoked. You will embrace all of you and the people and the like-minded women with you and go home invigorated and evolved to what it is, the next step, the next phase, the next you lovingly your core values so i hope every single woman if you are watching this if you are going to be in the los angeles area on march 24th choose to be there because there is going to be exciting things that i will also reveal that i want you to be a part of this and with that i thank you I thank you truly for being here at this very moment, all of you who are present here and the ones of you who are going to be watching this um, as a replay. So if, the, if you're watching this as a replay, please let me know as a replay and I will go back and respond to all the comments. I thank you. God bless you. May the universal and God's light be with you protect you and shield you. I stand beside you when you need me to hold your hand and through my experiences learn how I can work and empower you and be the inspiration for the loving person that you are and the beauty within you. Hi Becky. Hello Mark. Thank you for all of you being here.
God bless, and I will see you next week. And for all the ladies, I look forward to hugging you and seeing you soon. 3E event for more information. Goodbye.